Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here as always. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little different where I show one of my mocks that I made a few years back instead of an actual uh, official Lego set. Um, this one I made out of uh, mostly a combination of two uh, Star Wars Lego sets, uh, which I'm going to kind of do a run through in this video on those because obviously I can't do videos on those. Most of the parts are over here. Um, this is a combination of the 7669 Anakin's Jedi Starfighter from 2008, the, uh, Clone Wars theme. Uh, it was 153 pieces, cost about $20 MSRP. Uh, currently you can get it without the box or instructions or minifigs, uh, just the ship itself for starting about $15 on Bricklink. Um, and it goes up from there. Uh, if you wanted to get new sealed condition, uh, it starts at about a hundred bucks. Um, it came with two minifigures, uh, one of which was the R2-D2 that you probably have a bunch of. This is the original design for it with the white dome as opposed to the, uh, the light gray or the kind of chrome top that they've had in the last few years. Uh, the body is still the same. Uh, this goes for about 50 cents because everybody's got a bunch of them. Um, I'm not exactly sure where mine is from that set, so I had to grab that from the original X-Wing set, um, which came out about 10 years prior to this, and they were still using the same minifigure. Uh, the next one was the Clone Wars Anakin Skywalker, which, again, Everyone has a bunch of these because all of basically every single Clone Wars set that had Anakin in it came with this. He's a buck fifty. Um, I know I talked about him in the uh, T6 Jedi shuttle because that also came with that figure. He was a a stand-in for Quinlan Vos at the the last minute, um, and yeah, it, those figures aren't worth much. Um, the other set that this one is made out of is the 7656 General Grievous Starfighter, which actually came out the year before, uh, Anakin's Jedi Starfighter in 2007. It had 232 pieces, retailed for the same price, $20. Uh, it is from the Episode 3 line. Uh, you can get that, uh, used, uh, for about $20 on Brickling, so it hasn't really uh, appreciated much. Uh, sealed starts at about 65 so not a lot of uh, increase on that, mostly because it's been remade. Same with the Anakin Starfighter. They've both been remade since then. Um, the Grievous one only came with single minifigure, which is him. This is the original mold for Grievous. Mine is in actually pretty good uh, condition. No cracking. Uh, I can't see tell if there's any uh, yellowing on him. He seems pretty, pretty pristine. To, well, not pristine, but I mean, he's what almost twenty years old. Sixteen. He's seventeen years old by now. I don't like math. Um, very top heavy. That's why I've got him on this base. This base does not come with the set. Um, as you can see, there's a lot going on up there. It's it's an okay mold. Uh, they changed it to a more cartoony one for the Clone Wars series, which honestly functions better because it actually stands up on its own. Um, but this guy here goes for about $4. So not much value in there. But if you don't have them, I recommend picking them up. They're decent sets. Um, so this one, you can see like Anakin stuff, all the yellow and and uh, all the Republic insignia that comes from his ship. And then a lot of these panels, like these, these sides in there, they come from Grievous' ship. So this is something that, you know, I've done a few times where I kind of, if you don't know what uh, kit bashing is, it's where you take parts of different models like um, cars or Gundam, stuff like that, uh, and you kind of just make your own thing out of the chunks. Um, and I, I do that a lot with Legos, where I, I kit bash, set bash. Um, 
I, I see something that I like in the design and it inspires me. And, you know, if, if something inspires you, go for it. That's my philosophy. Like, um, I mean, it might not be an original design, but, you know, it sparks creativity and that's, that's all that's important. So if you ever see a set and you're like, man, I really like that part and I could see it in a different way, go for it. Uh, I did that here. Um, my main inspiration though was the cockpit here. Uh, if you are familiar with some of the other sets, you might recognize this build design. Uh, this is based off of the Republic Assault Shuttle. I'm going to show you right here. As you can see, that cockpit is designed the same way. I change it up a little bit. Mine is fixed straight, while this one is on a uh, incline. Not incline, but it's uh, tipped forward. But I just, I love this design so much that I wanted to recreate it. And then I was able to do it using uh, those two sets pretty well. Um, I'm not going to go over the details on the Republic Attack Shuttle because I will be doing a video for that independent to this. Because that is by far one of my favorite LEGO Star Wars sets of all time. Um, it is hands down the set that made me really appreciate the shuttle sets uh so look forward to that one probably pretty soon um but for this one i'm going to show you some of these features so we have the cockpit here and you've got two uh clone troopers up in here and the front opens up like this on a hinge and the back opens up like that and that's how you get the front there the back is actually one of my own designs i've got it on uh I don't know if you can tell. No, you can't tell because the way it's built. So we've got these tile pieces in there. And you see this gap here. It actually extends back one stud in there. This, most of the time you have um, like cockpits like this. You just take the canopy off. This one, I designed it to slide forward. And uh, you're able to get in there and get your guy out of there. And that recession allows this to go in there. Unfortunately, you do end up with that big gap right there. And I assume, not assume, uh, I'm pretty sure that someone with, you know, more space, better, more newer parts would be able to make like a cover that sits here and then just slides or tips up when you push this forward. So it kind of goes up like that and then... When you push it back, it drops down in place to cover that, but it's not too much of a, a problem for me. Um, I am very proud of this, though, with using what I had. Uh, it utilizes, um, if I remember right, some... Uh, yeah, you can't see it on that side, but you can see it on this side when you slide it forward in there. It uses a rail piece. Uh, one by four with the rail slot. Um, that's such a good piece. It doesn't get used that much. Or, I mean, it, it can, but I, I feel like it should be used more. Uh, we have these flick fires in here that you can't actually flick fire, but that's okay because I don't plan on doing that anyway. Uh, forward sort of rockets. You've got 100, almost 180 degree rotating forward cannons. Um, in the back here, you have uh, sort of like a dual turret, just goes up and down. Um, and then down here, I saw someone do this, I want to say on Facebook, a really long time ago. I have no idea where I saw it, but it's just the, uh, the one by one with the studs all the way around it with four of the classic binoculars. It's sort of like a rotary cannon. And then you just attach it with with a stud, uh, a post that has a stud on it. And uh, yeah, you get a little rotary cannon, a little that, and then uh, engines. Underneath you've got 
really inelegant, but it's the bottom side. You've got, I, I like to think of these as kind of like floodlights. Then you've got your uh, landing gear. These are off of Anakin Skywalker's uh, Starfighter. They fold up. Yeah, and that's profile underneath there. And they fold down. Functional, they stay in place. And they stand there. Um, those are the features. So I built this kind of with the idea that this would be sort of, you know, if I want to go into like story for this, it would be sort of like a, um, the Republic had made a, uh, a heavily armored, uh, like convoy escort sort of ship. Uh, you do have with like the Arc 170s, you've got the three clone pilots. You've got the two in the front and the one in the back is the, the rear tail gunner. Similar, uh, similar concept here. Um, you got all these plates here, pretty heavily armored. So it'd be sort of like the rear guard for a convoy. Um, you'd have these for, you know, bigger ships and these for, uh, smaller, harder to get, or like a wide, uh, wide spray so you can get more smaller targets. Um, numerous, whatever. So you've got your dedicated rear gunner. I like to think of him as like the pilot and him as the navigator slash forward gunner. Um, but then like the ARC-170, it would have been phased out for uh, less expensive, uh, less bulky ships like the, uh, the, uh, the V-Wing. You know, this would have been a highly specialized uh, vehicle, which costs a lot and requires multiple uh, crew members. And just like uh, with the ARC-170, they would have phased it, like I said, to something a little less specialized, more general, that could fill the, the role and other roles, like the the V-Wing. That smaller... Um, takes fewer resources to make, uh, fewer, uh, men to crew it. So all around better. Um, but you know, I like it. I, I really enjoy how I was able to get this where it is. Um, these side ones, uh, wing sort of things, um, they're attached and they're mostly built basically how they were in the Grievous set. You know, it's it's modified a bit, but it's generally, it's attached the same way. Uh, I'm gonna pull these off here. Um, come on. You know, you got that, you got the axles and pin pieces in there. I like it. I'm, I'm proud of it, despite how uh, kind of inelegant it is. I always rack it up to like, oh yeah, it's kind of like a, a prototype or something thing. Um, I just, I love this cockpit. I love this design. I really need to do some more with that, but I just, I love that. Yeah, it's so good. Sorry, I'm gushing about it. Um, what else can I say about this? <sighs> yeah, you know, if you if you see something in an official set that really gets you thinking, man, I could, I could do something with that. Go for it. You know, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, and then right before I started filming this, like I've never really thought of a name for this. Oh, pardon me. But right as I was, I was sitting down to make this video, I kind of looked at it and was like, you know, it kind of looks like a locust, like a grasshopper. You got this, you know, the big face here, the head, and then you've got these, which are kind of like the the legs of the grasshopper. You know, how it goes up and down and there. And then you've got, like, kind of the little tail bits. And it's like, you know, I could go for, like, a locust or something as as the designation on this. Or, I don't know. It's just an idea. But, like, that's kind of kind of looks like a locust in the profile there. It's a lot easier to tell uh, in person. But anyway... Uh, that's about all I can say about this guy. Um, 
but yeah, go build stuff, man. Uh, you don't always have to follow the directions. You know, that's what, that's the beauty about Lego is you, you can build according to the instructions and then take it apart, build whatever you want out of it, smash it if you want, combine it with other sets. That's, that's the beauty of Lego. It's whatever you want it to be. Uh, and I think that's something that everyone in this community can agree with. Um, that's the greatest strength of Lego. Um, anyways, uh, I'm just rambling on, so I'm going to call this video good. Uh, do the whole YouTube thing if you want, and I will see you on the next one. See you guys.